There are many disabilities that impact the human condition. One of these is blindness. The sermon today is about an encounter between a blind man, Bartimaeus and Jesus. Today there is a lot of financial, physical, emotional and technological support for people who are blind. This was certainly not the case in Jesus' day. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Blind people were believed to be cursed. Their blindness was believed to be God's punishment for sin. Now Jesus debunks this idea in another story of him healing a blind man as recorded in John 9, 1 to 3, saying that blindness was not the result of sin. Nevertheless, many people still believed that disabilities were the result of sin. And sadly, this is still the case in some countries in our world today. Jesus was traveling with his disciples one day when he passed a blind man, Bartimaeus. By the way, Bartimaeus simply means son of Timaeus. This was the day in the city of Jericho when a physically blind man saw in an understanding and perception sense more than all the sighted people around him. The blind man got it. This blind man realised who Jesus was and responded in faith. His vision was restored and he followed Jesus. The encounter between Bartimaeus and Jesus seems to be much of a straightforward story. However, there appears to be a lot of underlying meaning in this exchange between them. Mark's gospel makes it clear that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who, as the Messiah, had come into our human world. Right from the first verse of the book of Mark, we are reminded that the gospel story is the beginning of the good news of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. This good news is brought by Jesus and is about Jesus. The term son of David was used for the Messiah. Messiah is a Hebrew term meaning anointed one. The Old Testament people of God, the Israelites, came to anticipate a person anointed or blessed by the Spirit of God who would function once again as king and priest over Israel. This person would have special powers and would be the deliverer, the ruler of Israel and the Greek term for Messiah is Christ therefore Jesus Christ as Messiah the anointed one is ushering in or bringing in the new age that the Jewish people had been expecting for centuries the Messiah has come they need wait no longer the Christ has come the messianic age has arrived birthed in a cattle shed in Bethlehem. The problem was, and which caused so much confusion, the people of Christ's day just did not get it. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the priests, they did not understand it. Even the disciples did not really grasp the reality in the beginning. The Jewish people, the people of Israel, wanted a Messiah all right. Yet this meek and mild Jesus, who went around doing good and loving people and telling people to love each other and even love their enemies, just did not fit with their idea of a Messiah. They desired a conquering saviour who would fight for them and drive their enemies out of their land and allow them to live in peace, happiness and prosperity. So this Jesus did not meet these criteria for them. Yet Jesus was the true and only Messiah. And the ministry of Jesus was evidence that the Messianic age, Messianic age had indeed come on earth. Therefore, even though the miracles that Jesus did for the blind, the deaf, the dumb and the lame were astounding and defining, they were simply first and foremost indications that the actual hopes and dreams that the people of Israel had long cherished 
in relation to the coming of the Messiah was being fulfilled right before their very eyes. Yet most people could not see this. Most people could not understand this. Most people did not get this. Blind Bartimaeus did. Bartimaeus, on hearing that Jesus was passing by, called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me now in my affliction. Heal me. Many people wanted him to keep quiet and told him to stop shouting. There's often some troublemakers in every crowd and perhaps they thought Bartimaeus was one of them. However, Bartimaeus understands who Jesus is and he shouts out even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me now and heal me. Bartimaeus knows that Jesus is the Christ, the true Messiah, the saviour of the world, and he will not be silenced. Jesus hears Bartimaeus, calls him over, asks him what he wants. Bartimaeus wants to be able to see physically. Jesus, as the Messiah, gives Bartimaeus his sight and a sign that the messianic age has arrived in and with Jesus is further revealed. The deeper issue to this story lies in the fact that the healing of blind Bartimaeus serves as a reminder that many people who came into contact with Jesus thought that they could see, yet were blind in their hearts and minds. Bartimaeus, on the other hand, could see with his heart and mind, even though he was physically blind. The saying, too blind to see, still has application today because there is a blindness which is not physical. There is a blindness that has nothing to do with the human eyes. It is a blindness which is related to the human heart, human thinking, attitudes and behaviours. Its name is ignorance. And it has a twin, an evil twin whose name is arrogance. And these evil twins were certainly alive and well in the hearts and minds of many of those who witnessed the encounter between Bartimaeus and Jesus. And still today, these evil twins can blind us to all sorts of things in our lives. They can blind us to many isms and phobias that we perpetuate in our lives to the point that we don't even know how much we hurt other people by the things we say, the things we write, or the things we do. I recently read a book by Greg Elshoff entitled, I Told Me So. It's a very challenging and confronting book about self-deception in the Christian life. And to borrow some ideas from this book, all of us have things in our lives that we are blind to. And to deny that this is the case does not help. In fact, it makes things worse. It makes the blindness darker and it makes the deception deeper. According to the author, the only way to deal with our blindness and self-deception is to face up to the fact that they exist in our lives and ask God the Holy Spirit to reveal them to us so that we can say, in the words of Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me and heal my blindness. In Christ's day, many people who were sighted, people who had excellent vision, failed to see who Jesus was and missed the opportunity of a lifetime. Along comes a blind man, Bartimaeus. He cannot visually or physically see anything at all. Yet he saw who Jesus was and took the opportunity of a lifetime. There's only question there is only one question that remains. Are we too blind to see and believe who Jesus is? Or are we like Bartimaeus who sees and believes, has faith in God and gives his life to following Christ? The cold hard truth is this. When we truly see who Jesus is and what Jesus and his teaching is all about, we will no longer be blind and we will see Jesus as Saviour 
and we will see other people the way Jesus sees them. Please allow me to share a prayer with you. God of mercy, grace and truth, please forgive us when we are blind, when we do not see the things of your kingdom, your compassion and mission in our world. Please forgive us when we are blind to self-righteousness that blames the poor for their poverty, the oppressed for their oppression, the refugee for seeking asylum, the victim for being the perpetrator. Please forgive us when we are blind in accepting those people we like, yet rejecting others for the colour of their skin, their ethnicity, their religion or their culture. Please forgive us when we are blind in turning our churches into private clubs of comfort and retreat for loving familiar songs, music, the clothes we wear, religious feelings, traditions and doctrines more than we love you and others. Please forgive us when we are blind in pasting stained glass over our eyes and cliched dogma in our ears to shut out the cry of the oppressed the marginalised, the exploited and hurt within our world. Please help us be like Bartimaeus in seeing you for who you really are, our Redeemer, our Christ, our Messiah, and follow you in faith. Amen.